with the metal frame then you'll need to swap over the frame from your original screen. Before you do this it's a good idea to put sticky tape over the screen to stop the glass splinters from going everywhere. So just put a bit of sticky tape across there. So you're making a mess and it's also a good idea to test your new screen before you take it all apart so using your plastic tool lift the ribbon connector up and place a small piece of sticky over there so it doesn't short out and take your new screen and plug that in Place the battery, press the power button, and as you can see it's working ok. You can let it fully boot to check all those messages and missed calls that you couldn't see. Once you have it, it's working OK. Shut the phone down by pressing the power button. And when it's finished shutting down, remove the battery. And disconnect the new screen. Now we can remove all the components. Start by releasing the ribbon connectors and lift out your speaker housing and do this single screw at the bottom disconnect your antenna cable and remove that. Lift the little circuit out. You could leave this in, but just in case I take it out so it doesn't get damaged. Then we can lift the main board out. You can leave this SIM tray connected and just carefully lift the camera out and put that aside. Now it's a good idea to remove the earpiece, power LED and the volume switches just in case it gets a little bit too hot when we're replacing the screen. So push out your volume switch and lift those volume switches away. the ribbon cable away, just nice and gently. So you could leave this in but just in case it gets a bit hot we're going to remove that. And remove your proximity sensor and your secondary camera. Finally, the vibrating module. Again, you could leave this in, but we're going to get it quite hot, so it's a good idea to remove all the components. And that little microphone gasket, just in case it falls out, I'll take that out. 
and what we need to do is to get the screen nice and hot so we soften the adhesive and it lets us push the screen away from the frame so you can use a hair dryer, a fan heater or here I have a hot air pan stripper now to save my hands from getting burnt I'm going to put on some white cotton gloves you can use any gloves you like just as long as you don't burn your hands so I'm going to try and push it away from the top first using a screwdriver and a plastic tool and just in case it gets too hot I'm going to remove the power switch here as well just in case we get a bit too hot for that so switch on your heat source so the key to making this as easy as possible is to keep the screen in the flow from the heat source all of the time so it doesn't get cold or cool down so give it one or two minutes to warm up and make sure you get the metal chassis and the screen nice and hot as hot as your hands can bear without burning You can skip any stage by clicking the link at the top of the video. If you're watching on a mobile device then you'll have to use the seek bar at the bottom to skip any of this. Once it's nice and warm, using a screwdriver, try and push the screen away from the frame. And you can see here it lifts away reasonably easy. I tried pushing the display out from the back and it didn't want to move. I am pushing quite hard here. And it, it is giving a little bit. So now I'm trying to twist the screwdriver in the hole and that didn't seem to work. Pushing through the proximity sensor hole, that's lifted the screen up quite easily. And what I'm trying to do here is preserve the black double sided adhesive along the top. Don't worry too much if you can't preserve it, but if you can, it will help prevent dust getting between the secondary camera and the screen. So here I'm taking out the LED light diffuser. Let me put this in a bit later on. And it gives me a, another hole to push the screen away from the frame. So take your time, keep the screen nice and hot. And gently push. And you'll see that I've gradually come away. And again, I try and push the display, but it, it doesn't want to move. It's really well stuck on there. So here I've managed to separate the glass from the black adhesive. And it's melting my separation tool, so I'll switch back to the screwdriver. And I've moved the heat source away so it's not quite so hot. All the time it's hot, this adhesive is quite easy to play with and move about. But once it gets cold it uh, goes stiff.
So I'm trying to lever the display, but it doesn't seem to want to lift out at this stage. So the actual glass screen seems to lift quite easily when it's hot. It's just the display that's uh, stuck down really well. If you don't have a heat source of any kind you could use uh, brute force to remove the old screen uh, but you'd probably find it a lot more difficult when the adhesive is cold. So as long as you don't damage the metal frame around the screen, you can use as much force as you like. Be careful not to damage the earpiece grill, as that will be visible when you put your new screen on. So I'm trying to preserve this double sided adhesive on the edge here. It seems that the glass screen itself lifts away reasonably easy when it's nice and hot. It's just the display screen is stuck down with this different um, type of adhesive don't worry about damaging the touch key ribbons as the new screen comes with them and you could remove the home key here if you wanted to I'll leave it on for now though Now I'm trying to lift the display up again, and this time it, it does lift up. But as you can see, it's breaking the display in the process, which doesn't matter as we're replacing it anyway. I was hoping to be able to remove the display without too much damage, but the adhesive is just too strong. So what's happening at the moment is the digitizer is separating from the AM OLED display. Once you've got that separated, you can pull it away. 
And again, we're trying to preserve the black double-sided adhesive down the edges. So although it's breaking the display, it is separating it from the metal frame. So you could be a lot more heavy handed if you wanted to be. You just use brute force. And it's that uh, black adhesive around the outside edge that seems to be the, the toughest one. So I want to reuse this adhesive down the side here, so I'm making sure there's no glass splinters or bits of the display stuck underneath. A couple of small pieces there. Don't worry if you can't reuse the it's adhesive, it'll still stick down okay and you won't uh, notice any difference So this bit's damaged, so I'll just cut most of it off. Make sure you remove any glass splinters that are left behind. Now while it's nice and hot, you should find this tape will pull off. Put it nice and slowly. And this is the tape that made it so difficult to remove the display.
Now we need to remove the adhesive in the centre here. It's slightly different from the tape. So a screwdriver could take quite a while. But if you have a flat blade or a craft knife, you'll find that it scrapes a lot more off at the same time. And just take your time and try and remove as much of the adhesive as you can. So your new screen sticks down quite nicely. You may need to replace the home button and that comes off quite easily. There you go. So if you're replacing the home button, you need to lift this ribbon cable up. Sorry, tape. Just carefully lift it up. If it's got water in there, that would probably stop it working. And once you've got that lifted up, come around to the other side and lift up the ribbon cable on this side. Comes that reasonably easy. Make sure you clean off all the adhesive. If you cannot reuse this double sided adhesive then it won't do much harm but you may find that dust gets between the secondary camera and the glass.
make absolutely sure that there's no glass splinters left behind otherwise the new screen won't sit down nice and flat once you're happy that that's done we can replace the home switch if you're changing that feed that switch through bring it around Make sure you line up the hole with a little pin and give that a push down to stick in place. Come over to the other side and make sure you line up the small pins with the holes on the circuit and give that a gentle push down as well. Now you can replace the button. So have it round this way and line up a little pins each side. And it's working fine. Now we can put the new screen in place. So remove the protective coating on the top and the double sided protective film Put that away try not to touch this as it's very sticky and the ribbon cable you want to bring that up and put a slight bend just where that white line is there just put a gentle bend so it stands up nice and straight bring that over to the frame, making sure that that ribbon cable feeds through and line it up, don't push it down just yet, Let's make sure all the edges line up and the home button is working okay and if you're happy that's sitting central then you can start pushing it down into place give that a nice firm pressure with a bit of heat in your pocket that will stick down very nicely making sure it's all nice and flush and the home button works ok now we need to replace that power LED diffuser so drop that into place and then follow reassembly by clicking the link at the top of the video if your replacement screen does come with a metal frame you might need to transfer this heatsink gasket over to your new frame so carefully lift that up and then transfer that over to your new case this is to sink the heat away from your quad core CPU Without this, it will get hot and will run slow. Thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll do my best to make some more. If your new screen doesn't come with the metal frame, then you'll need to swap over the frame from your original screen. Before you do this, it's a good idea to put sticky tape over the screen to stop the glass splinters from going everywhere. So just put a bit of sticky tape across there. That'll save making a mess. And it's also a good idea to test your new screen before you take it all apart. So using your plastic tool, lift the ribbon connector up and place a small piece of sticky over there so it doesn't short out. And take your new screen and plug that in. 
replace the battery, press the power button, and as you can see it's working okay. You can let it fully boot to check all those messages and missed calls that you couldn't see. So once you have it, it's working okay. Shut the phone down by pressing the power button. And when it's finished shutting down, remove the battery and disconnect the new screen. Now we can remove all the components. Start by releasing the ribbon connectors. Lift out your speaker housing. Undo this single screw at the bottom. Disconnect your antenna cable. And remove that. Lift the little circuit out. You could leave this in but just in case I take it out so it doesn't get damaged. Now we can lift the main board out. You can leave this SIM tray connected and just carefully lift the camera out and put that aside. Now it's a good idea to remove the earpiece, power LED and the volume switches just in case it gets a little bit too hot when we're replacing the screen. So push out your volume switch and lift those volume switches away. Lift the ribbon cable away just nice and gently. You could leave this in, but just in case it gets a bit hot, we're going to remove that. And remove your proximity sensor and your secondary camera. And finally, the vibrating module. Again, you could leave this in, but we're going to get it quite hot, so it's a good idea to remove all the components. And that little microphone gasket, just in case it falls out, I'll take that out. Now what we need to do is to get the screen nice and hot so we soften the adhesive and it lets us push the screen away from the frame. So you can use a hair dryer, a fan heater, or here I have a hot air panty stripper. Now to save my hands from getting burnt, I'm going to put on some white cotton gloves. You can use any gloves you like, just as long as you don't burn your hands. So I'm going to try and push it away from the top first using a screwdriver and a plastic tool. And just in case it gets too hot I'm going to remove the power switch here as well. Just in case we get a bit too hot for that. So switch on your heat source. So the key to 
making this as easy as possible is to keep the screen in the flow from the heat source all of the time so it doesn't get cold or cool down so give it one or two minutes to warm up and make sure you get the metal chassis and the screen nice and hot as hot as your hands can bear without burning you can skip any stage by clicking the link at the top of the video if you're watching on a mobile device then you'll have to use the seek bar at the bottom to skip any of this so once it's nice and warm using a screwdriver try and push the screen away from the frame and you can see here it lifts away reasonably easy I tried pushing the display out from the back and it didn't want to move I am pushing quite hard here and it, it is giving a little bit so now I'm trying to twist the screwdriver in the hole and that didn't seem to work pushing through the proximity sensor hole that's lifted the screen up quite easily and what I'm trying to do here is preserve the black double sided adhesive along the top don't worry too much if you can't preserve it but if you can it will help prevent dust getting between the secondary camera and the screen So here I'm taking out the LED light diffuser, let me put this in a bit later on.